Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the fundamental differences between a nuclear reactor and a nuclear weapon. And so there's a lot of misconceptions, or students usually come to this course with a lot of misconceptions about these two pieces and they think they're all combined and it's all the same thing, when to be completely honest that is just not even close to the truth. So we're going to use this video to try to break apart those misconceptions and make sure we really understand the differences between safe safe nuclear chemistry and not safe very very dangerous nuclear weapons so let's make two columns here so we have nuclear reactors so nuclear reactors just to remind you are the things that are existing in nuclear power plants so that's the piece that we use to actually release that energy or as an alternative energy source and we're going to use a second column here we're going to compare it to nuclear weapons and so there's four main things I want to point out here in this discussion. And the first one, which is really, truly the most important thing, is that in a nuclear reactor, this is a controlled reaction. We have it under control. We are doing all these different safety parameters, or we impose all these safety parameters to make sure that this reaction is under control. With a nuclear weapon, it is 100% an uncontrolled reaction. It is just uncontrolled. There's not one piece of safety equipment around, not trying to do anything to make this reaction stop. It is uncontrolled and it's crazy. It's just madness. All right, the second thing I want to point out that a reactor uses chain reactions and they do this by making sure they have a critical mass. Whereas with a nuclear weapon, that is not the case. They have one big, and I think big is an understatement, but one big explosion that halts all, all, uh, all chain reactions. And this process occurs in less than one second. Okay, less than one second. It is so fast. So for a nuclear reactor, reactor, it is a slow, slow process that uses the chain reaction. So a neutron hits uranium, that blows to pieces, releasing more neutrons, and that goes out and hits more uranium. And so it's just a slow, slow, slow chain reaction. For a nuclear weapon, it is this huge explosion once. One time, it boosh, and then all the critical mass goes crazy. It goes everywhere, and so it's no longer allowed to actually have these, uh, these chain reactions. So think about if you had a huge explosion in your your domino setup and all your dominoes are just blown way far away from each other they no longer have a possibility of hitting each other and having those chain reactions continue okay they're very very different all right so like I said a reactor is a slow continuous fission reaction okay fission reaction but more importantly it is controlled by things called fuel fuel rods or control rods, excuse me. Fuel rods are the source of energy, right? And we'll talk about that in the future. Now for a nuclear weapon, it is very, very difficult to actually maximize reactivity. And so this is a big thing that people just kind of glaze over or they don't for, they don't remember when the people teach them or maybe they just never heard this. But for a nuclear weapon, it's really hard to make those chain reactions occur. It's very, very hard. I, I don't like using the word impossible in science, but I would say it's almost impossible to control that and to actually maximize this reactivity just because of the way these processes occur. Okay, so we just want to make sure that's very clear in our brains. And the last thing, which is also important, is that in a reactor, we harness the energy. So energy is harnessed. So we're not releasing all of this energy and then just sitting there and being like, whoops, that was fun. I, that was a really neat mushroom cloud that we saw. No, the energy that's released is captured and then we use that, we convert it to electrical energy and we use that to light up our schools and our buildings and so on and so forth. And the other one, okay, so in your weapon, it is not, not harnessed at all. Not. We're just going to put not. And let me show you a picture of this if I can find it here. This is actually a picture of our test run. It was called Priscilla. That was the code name. And so they did this right outside of Las Vegas. And so this specific atomic bomb that they dropped, so this is a weapon called Priscilla, this one actually was twice as powerful as the bombs that were dropped in uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And so that is what something that would be, this one that we're looking at, is twice as bad as the ones that were actually dropped, in, which I mean 
can't even go there. It was just a terrible thing. So but this is something that we need to keep straight in our mind. So this is weapon. This is not nuclear reactor. This will never, ever, ever happen again. I don't like saying the word never in science, but never happen in a nuclear reactor because we have safety precautions set up to make sure that this never happens because this would be catastrophic. Okay. All right. So let me ask you a quick question. Do you think, in your opinion, is it easy, is it easy for a, and I'm going to put quotes, bad guy, because there's a, another word I would like to use, but you not really say that on here. <laughs> so for a bad guy to create an atomic bomb. Okay. So is it possible for some jerk on the street to just run around and grab a bunch of U-235 and create an atomic bomb? Go. All right. Did you get an answer? Hopefully you did, and the answer simply is no. It is not easy for somebody to go just create an atomic bomb or to actually just create a nuclear weapon. U-235 has to be so pure in order to do this, and you have to have a way to somehow then get all this U-235 to a certain place and have the explosion without having it go through these, this spontaneous explosion before you even get to where you want to drop this bomb. It's just not an easy process, and thank goodness for that. Have a great week. Take care of yourself and drink water.